So in today's lesson, I wanted to talk about the backswing and primarily how the shoulders function in the backswing and whether they're a primary force or whether they're a secondary force. So the rotation of our shoulders in the backswing is really, really important. How we achieve that can sometimes differ and sometimes there's an argument for one scenario and an argument for another. So I want to cover both of those in this video lesson. So your backswing starts the moment you move the club back away from the ball. Now we can dissect that into, if you like, hours on a clock. This would be six o'clock down at the floor, 12 o'clock up here. And as I move to here, this would be seven, eight, nine. You'll get some wrist hinge here or cocking of the wrists here as you move further back into your backswing but it's the my trail arm for me my left arm is pointing at 10 and then my left arm would point at 11 o'clock one or two pros you might see very flexible younger than me they can probably get their left arm up to more like 12 o'clock but I think if we think of it from six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven in the back swing, you're never going to go far wrong with that. Okay, so we've got our six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven o'clock in the back swing. Now six to seven, that would effectively be your takeaway. Well I'm not going to go into that in too much detail now. There's another video I've done purely on the takeaway if you want to go to the channel and look at that. But what I want to try and talk about is how the shoulders are either involved or should we say not involved when we swing back. Now if you look at any good player, you'll see that their shoulders turn a lot very early into their back swing. So as they swing back, it's not this one because you can see there's no shoulder turn. They have a very early shoulder turn in their back swings. It's easy when we take out the hands and arms and we can really feel that rotation, but then when we have the club in our hands, we can't quite get that same feeling as, as to what's moving my shoulders. So there's two ways of looking at this. The first way, is that the hands and arms do very, very little as you go back into your backswing. And the second one is the wrist cocking in the backswing and the way that the backswing sort of folds up to the top of the backswing makes the shoulders turn. No hand and arm action to speak of, so I felt like my shoulders have took me to that position. So now, if I now try to swing back with more of a hand and arm feeling, so I'm going to feel like I'm setting the club a little earlier. Now, you can see my shoulders haven't turned quite as much at this point, but as the hands and arms progress upwards, the shoulders feel like they want to facilitate that. If you look at Jack Nicholas, very much a no hands golfer. He was always big muscles. If I move my big muscles, my little muscles must follow. Then you look at someone like maybe Seve Ballesteros, very feely type of player, very sort of hands and release sort of feeling within his swing. But if you look at his shoulder turn in the back swing, it was fantastic. Really, really good. So what is he doing different to Jack Nicholas? Some coaches will teach that the shoulders are a secondary force in the back swing. Others will be very much promoting that you've got to feel like you're getting your shoulders turning. You know, there's devices that you can put on towels under your armpits and all these sort of things to try to force you to, to get the body turning. But unfortunately, I favor that 
for smaller shots, when we want less hands, when we want power, we want to feel like we're really getting some, some hinging and releasing through back and through the ball. So what I want to do next is explain how you can bring these two together. My recommendation for most amateur golfers would be the feeling that you're getting the wrists setting, the hands and arms in motion and the, the weight of the club effectively helping your shoulders turn. What I want us to try and do, I want us to try to feel like we're getting the setting of the wrists at our eight o'clock position in the backswing. So we've got six, seven, eight, and then when we get to around the eight o'clock mark, we try to fully hinge, fully cock the wrists at that point. So by the time you've got to sort of the nine, almost into your 10 o'clock position, your, your club has been set fully. So you've got your maximum power set. But what we don't want to do is this one, because I haven't had any turn. You have to have turn, very un successful way of playing. Yes, you can still hit it. I'll do one now. No big muscles, just hands and arms. And that's actually a really good shot for that golf swing. It's gone round about 120, 130, but I'm never gonna hit that any further just by using my hands and arms. And to be fair, as I get older, all that will happen is that distance will significantly decrease. So we do want the big muscles joining in. But what I don't want to see you do is this. Well, I'll, I'll do the Jack Nicholas method and then we end up lifting up our body. And then to be fair, we're probably gonna to top it because we've lifted up so much. So I suggest you go and try this, but go from six to seven to eight for right-handed player, seven, eight o'clock, no hands, just letting the shoulders dictate that first sort of third of your backswing and then hinge fully and I think that's a wonderful piece of advice to get to the eight o'clock then hinge fully cock fully with your wrists so let me just do a sort of half shot here no wrists and quite effective, makes the big muscles want to swing, makes the legs want to join in. So it's very much the, the Jack Nicholas method. Let me know how you get on with this. Leave me a comment. Let me know if you use uh, the big muscles for your backswing or whether or not you feel the, the shoulders are a secondary force when you swing back. And as ever, like, share, subscribe and all of that stuff. And until next time, thanks very much for watching.